having trouble going live. Some strange <laughs> I don't know what's going on. That's not what we want to do. Having trouble connecting. We're on the internet. All right, here we are. We are live. Hey there, everybody. Hannah Levin here with Heartfelt Wellbeing. We're back for another inspirational interview. Very excited to introduce you to Kate King today. I have been really enjoying getting to know her, and I'm sure you will too. Before we get to the interview, I just want to remind you that you are welcome to participate in this if you're here live on our Facebook forum. Feel free to type in the chat. We love to hear your comments or questions along the way. And if you're watching the replay, give us a hashtag replay and feel free to um, ask questions, even if you're watching the replay. So Kate King comes to us from Colorado, and I'm just going to read a little bit of her bio. She, she's the founder and owner of the Radiant Life Project. Her mission is to create a ripple effect of health and meaningful joy in our world by helping her clients and audience learn to cultivate radiant lives for themselves that shine so brightly they impact and improve the lives of those surrounding them as well. Sound a little familiar, very much in line with what we're doing around here. So she's the author of The Authentic Mother and the upcoming release of The Radiant Life Project. I'm going to just dive in here and welcome Kate King. Hello. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to talk with you today. So I'd love to just start with a little bit more of an introduction to who you are and how you came to find creativity as an outlet for your own evolution. Yeah, I feel like creativity has been in my blood since, you know, early childhood. Um, I was very innovative, very magical little girl. Um, but also I had kind of a, a perspective of seriousness about me. Mm -hmm. And so having the creative outlet to explore the world and to explore my feelings, which were really expansive at a young age, it just helped me understand the power of creativity at really any age and at any stage of life. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I used to carry around sketchbooks everywhere I went and um, my family was really creative. So it was kind of in my blood. I pursued it in college and um, I actually ended up going to Google to figure out like, what do you do with an art major and a psychology major? And that's how I found out about art therapy. And so that you know, it kind of went into an art therapy degree. And now I practice as a board certified art therapist and a licensed professional counselor in Denver, Colorado. So I like to fuse creativity with the psyche and spirituality and nature. And it just really applies everywhere. Yes. And I love when we were initially talking, I was like, we kind of do similar things. We've just taken it in different directions. I almost went and got my master's degree in art therapy um, years and years ago and, you know, have a background as an artist. My parents are artists, right? like very similar um, and, and similar callings of like, we want to use creativity and alignment with nature to help ourselves and each other heal. So, um, I, I'd love to hear a little bit too about the the mental health aspect of, you know, you are a clinical social worker, right? Is that your uh, licensed professional counselor? Licensed professional counselor. Okay, 
Yeah. Yeah. So art therapy can go into social work as well, too. Okay. It can go into psychiatry. It can go into all forms of medicine. It's really complimentary. And now it's getting a little more press because um, Princess Kate is all about art therapy. And so she is constantly, you know, promoting it. So it's getting a little more visibility. Um, but it's really helpful with mental health and not only clinical mental health, but also the type of mental health that most people experience where you just have an anxious day or a period of depression or deep grief because it allows for another tool. Yeah. When we just talk about what's going on with us, we have all these little guards in our mind that filter and tell us what we should say, what we should not say, what's politically correct. And when we use art for the emotional healing process, it's like a back door into the psyche so you get to represent what's going on with you, even if it's unconscious. You don't have to know. You can use color and line and shape, and they resonate on a really deep somatic level, which is the body, uh, the body experience, rather than just the mind, you know, saying, is it appropriate? Is it acceptable? Are people going to judge me? Creativity doesn't abide by any of those rules when it's used for expression. And so it allows people to use metaphor in a way that's really tangible. And when we can project what's going on inside of us, out on paper or canvas or fabric, it doesn't live in here anymore. And it provides us what's called sublimation, which is when the energy moves through us and beyond us to create something new. So it's not just for release or catharsis, but it can actually be for meaningful creation of something outside of yourself. Mm, I love that so much. Yes, 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 yes. And those of you who have worked with me know too, like at our retreat that we had in August, we were working with art, visual arts as part of our, our experience there. And it is like everything you're saying is so powerful. And it's amazing to me how shut down a lot of us are to our creativity I know we both believe that everybody is inherently creative. And yet, you know, I was an art teacher for 11 years and I met so many people during that time, especially when I say, yeah, I'm a high school art teacher. And they'd say, oh, I can't draw a straight line to save my life or I can't, you know, these, these things. And I, I would just say, you don't need to draw a straight line. Like what kind of line can you draw? Like that's a special line. That's awesome. You know, and how so many of us were shut down very young being told we didn't have any talent or, you know, don't show what you do to anybody or it's embarrassing or, you know, and can, can you talk about that a little bit, maybe from the, the side of creativity and also from like the mm -hmm. therapist side? Absolutely. There are so many people who come to art therapy and they're really self-conscious mm. and they tell me, oh, I'm, I'm not here for the art therapy part. I just want the other types of therapy you do because I can't draw and I don't really know how to draw. And a lot of people, an alarming amount of people have told me about kindergarten experiences wow. with with school art teachers that told them they were bad at drawing oh, or nice. said that they're not artistic. And when you're so impressionable, and you're just little and all you want to do is make stuff and somebody tells you that you're bad or wrong, it really creates narratives that last a long time. And yeah. so when people are willing to come to art therapy, even after an experience like that, and they're willing to just sit down and draw lines or play with chalk or just use shapes and colors without needing them to look any certain way, mm -hmm. it's deeply reparative. And it helps their system understand that we don't have to create this art piece because of the product. It's about the process. Yes. Yes. So art therapy is healing both because of product and process, but more because of process itself, mm -hmm. because creating things is so inherent before any of us get squashed. We are all making things with sticks and mud and crayons and bath soap. It's right. everywhere around us. So I often tell people that actually the artists are not always as successful in art therapy because they're mm. really attached to the to the end product. Mm. And the people who don't identify as artists, it's like you don't have any idea how expressive your stick figures are gonna be, right? Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna tell us so much because you're not attached to what it looks like. Right. You know, and there's some things you could do to sort of loosen up the 
rigidity and the insecurity around that, like drawing with your non-dominant hand just mm -hmm. takes off the pressure. You don't have to make anything good because no one expects it. <laughs> or drawing upside down mm -hmm. or drawing with white crayon on white paper so that you mm -hmm. actually can't see it. And then coming over on top of that with watercolor to create that, you know, the relief difference. So things like that just help people like loosen up and yeah. dip their toe into creativity in the beginning so that they can see that it's actually safe and it's helpful even if they don't create something they want to frame on the wall. Yes. Oh, I love all of those examples you just gave. Yes. Yeah, so fun. And that the, well, I, I feel like I... I think you would say the same, that there's an inherent aspect of being alive and fulfilling our human potential that is about creativity, mm -hmm. that's about expression. And, um, you know, so we sing or dance or, um, mm -hmm. and, and how much that brings a lot of folks into a place of discomfort and how that place of discomfort is such an opportunity to expand your sense of self. Yes. Right. You're no longer the person who doesn't dance or no longer the person who won't sing, you know, with everybody else or pick up a marker or whatever. And that that expansion is really freeing. It kind mm -hmm. of makes you go, well, what else is possible? Right. And I think it's important to your point to really make sure people understand that creativity does not have to look like visual arts. It could be right. music, dance. It could be gardening. It can be traveling, cooking. cooking. You can, you can be creative doing anything and everything because it's not something you do. It's a mindset you hold while yes. you're engaging in the rest of your life. There's an open heartedness, a curiosity and open mindedness that allows, you know, even the most, you know, technically non-creative, if you think about an accountant or, you know, someone who's, I don't know, a toilet plumber, <laughs> like you can find creativity in anything you do. As long as you have that mindset, it does not have to come with paints and markers. Right. Wonderful. So along those lines of kind of interpretation and seeing what, what we can see, you created a deck of cards that people can use to help with reflection. Yeah. So Kate's showing. Will you tell us about those and give yes. us an opportunity to interact with them? I actually just redesigned this deck. This is the third generation of what I call the Ink and Wings Oracle deck. And what's really cool about this one is that I designed a QR code on the back, which gives you the, the card meanings. Um, because from the art therapy perspective, we're not really taught to tell you what images mean because they can be so subjective and projective. And so when someone tells you what an image means, it sort of limits your ability to make your own associations with it. Mm. So I did not include definitions before, but by popular demand, I have it now as an option. Um, so the deck is filled with 46 images and um, they're all, they're all my own, my own artwork. I guess it's hard to see it fanned out like that, but I'll just show, um, kind wow. of a few. Yeah. They're really magical. There's just a few different, um, a few different kinds of animals and people, very colorful stuff. And they all kind of mean their own thing. So I use this deck for intuitive guidance and just to sort of help me navigate when, I'm not sure what's going on. They point the arrow back at myself and they give me a very specific um, intention to bring into my day. Mm, that's awesome. Thank so you. you had offered to do a drawing for this group. Yes. For, happy us, to do that. for, for, for today, right? Mm -hmm. To be like, what's, what's our focus or intention for today? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that I could draw two cards, maybe something to bring in and something to release awesome. as that an intention for the day. And um, I'll just, I'll spread these out now and fan them out with the intention of um, allowing the group energy to come through. Yeah. Monica, who's in the Vitalia circle, she just wrote in your Oracle deck looks amazing. She's a string artist in Texas. So oh, she... thank you so much, Yay. Monica. <laughs> It is for sale on my website if you want your own deck. Yes, we can all get decks. 
Okay, so I'm going to pull the first card. So this is what we're um, the intention to let go of for the day. Okay, okay and then I'll show you both of them when they're okay. both pulled. And then this is what we want to attract and bring in for the day. And it's just really intuitive p p picking the cards. There's really no, there's no right or wrong way to do it. All right, so these are the two that I pulled. Oh, how do I get in the camera? Okay. There you go. So um, this fire goddess was what to let go of. Oh. Yeah. So she is, she's a goddess. Um, I call her a phoenix goddess because she's sort of the, the death rebirth cycle, um, which Hannah, we were talking about a little bit earlier with the season that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's symbolic here that when you're transforming, there is a lot to release. And so I think that's why she came for what we're letting go of is just mm -hmm. releasing the things that don't serve you and having a lot of intention that if it feels painful, if it feels fiery, it's okay to let it go. It's okay to let it burn and mm -hmm. create room for something new to be born, which makes a lot of sense because this new piece, this is what we're going to attract and draw in. This is about allowing things to be undone and redone. It's mm -hmm. about reassembling and building something new out of the ashes really of what came before. So um, it's so funny. This deck always does this. I'm always like, wow, that really worked. <laughs> um, and then it just repeatedly does that for me every time. So um, so here's our intention. We're letting go of what doesn't serve us and we're bringing in the newness and we're going to restructure and rebuild. Wow. That feels particularly meaningful to me. I bet it does to other people too. <laughs> and I love that the, what we're letting go of is that fire goddess too. A couple reasons. Yeah. Somebody just wrote in, wow, Pitta fire of the summer. So we're, we are releasing that fire energy. We just started our autumn detox and it's all about clearing out the fire, the heat that's built up over the summer. So we don't take that drying energy into the dry fall with us and create further imbalance. So we want to bring that fire into, uh, into a releasing place. Yeah. And then also that this is the, um, in, in India, this is the, the festival right now of the goddess Durga, who is the fire. She's, she's kind of like the, the goddess of mothering energy, but also of, of creating destruction of like letting go of what no longer needs to be there. So like burning through, um, and, and asking that question of like, and what, like what, what is here now, you know, yeah. like letting, letting that go. So that's so, so beautiful. And then the, what, what we're inviting in of like, what what you shared it kind of sounds like composting <laughs> it's like letting go of what doesn't work and letting it re reassemble regrow into something else we're also in this the days of awe in the jewish tradition um and i was listening to a friend of mine um who was talking about it, what if we let a w e stand for and what else <laughs> like like, and what else, you know, wants, wants to come forth or, and what else do we want to let go of and what else can be recycled? And so I just, wow, that's so inspiring. It's, it's really such a magical deck. And yeah. every time I use it, I, I try to pull every day uh -huh. and every day I'm like, Oh my gosh, it worked again. <laughs> it always works. I guess you could see that there's a, even a skeptical part of me Right. Uh, with my own my own creative process, even after all these years. So I say that to exemplify for those of you listening that you don't have to be all in on anything ever. You can yeah. want to be skeptical if part of you is like, really, it's okay for that part to be there, you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. you prove it wrong and sometimes you prove it right. And it's really not about proving anything. It's just about continuing to explore. Yeah. So you just, you just touched on something, which I was hoping we could um, at least plant a seed about, which is the parts of us. So yeah. you work with internal family systems, which I use a version of in the vitality circle too, or kind of like a creative offshoot of internal family systems. Can you talk a little bit about that? Just give us a basic definition mm -hmm. of what it is and how we can. Yes. 
use that. Yes. Internal family systems is hands down the most powerful therapeutic approach I've ever used in my personal work and in my work with clients. Um, it's really powerful. It was developed by Richard Schwartz. There's a lot of great books. Uh, my favorite and more, I think the most recent one is called No Bad Parts, and it's really accessible. You can read it even if you don't have a psychological background. Um, essentially, it's sometimes internal family systems is abbreviated into parts work. So mm -hmm. it assumes that in our natural healthy state, we all have multiplicity of our mind which means that there are multiple parts of all of us and it's natural and it's normal. And in addition to parts, we all have a true self. So I like to think of it kind of like um, the sun and the solar system with the planets that orbit. And so the sun is true self and that is the essence of who you are. And it is compassionate and clear and playful and creative. That's kind of who you are when you're at your unwounded potential rich place in your life. And it's not possible to live in self all the time for any of us. So we kind of fractal off in our life into what's called parts. And this happens when something challenging goes on in our world. And this a lot of the time in early childhood. So we meet a barrier in our life and we're like, oh, I don't know how to react. So a part develops to react. So it says, okay, when that scary thing happens, what you really need is fear. So maybe we're going to develop a fear part to help keep you safe whenever you see dangerous dogs, maybe. And that fear part's going to come up and protect you whenever a dog is on the sidewalk. And it kind of comes, it orbits right in front of self. So you can't see self anymore. You can only see that part. And so what happens over time is that even as we age, we grow, we develop, we don't need to be afraid of dogs anymore. That part doesn't know that we're older and we're more capable. So it'll continue to function in the way it needs to function to protect our system. And so internal family systems work is about identifying the different parts of us that serve different functions, whether they're managing our world by making us really organized or um, really perfectionistic. Most people, particularly women, have really strong perfectionist parts. And these parts are all just doing the best that they can in a world that they think is really unsafe to keep us safe. There's also protector parts that aren't really there to organize our world. They're just there to put out fires. And so that's more like the numbing, the addiction, um, the impulsivity type of parts that are like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. Where's the, where's the bottle of wine? I need that to numb this out. Um, and there are also parts called exiles. And those are our wounded parts that we say like, oh, it's too scary. It's too fragile. It's too overwhelming. So we're not going to feel that thing. We're going to put that wounded child part or that wounded lover, whoever got really hurt, we're going to put that part way down in the basement and we're going to surround it with a bunch of protector parts so that we don't ever have to feel that fragile energy of the exile part. So in parts work, we try to come back to self. So self is not, the point is not to get rid of parts. The point is to reintegrate them with the system in harmony and balance. So if we can look at our parts from self, and we can say, oh, gosh, that protector is working so hard to keep us from feeling that exile energy. Wonder why it would be doing that and approach it with curiosity, approach it with compassion. Then we can befriend our parts and we can help them talk to us about why they exist and what their message is and what they're protecting us from. And we can actually free up. It's called unburdening in IFS. So we can unburden those parts and help bring them back into reintegration. So the final goal of IFS is harmony and balance in the system. Awesome. Thank you. That was a fabulous short introduction to IFS. Um, yeah, and we work with that, those of you in the Vitality Circle watching, this is the inner council cards. So we do this as a creative process and give each of these parts names and some sort of artistic expression, wow. <laughs> um, which is which is really fun. And, the, and then we can kind of say, oh, that's a part of me um, and, and it is really, really powerful. So one part of you is that you are also a mother mm -hmm. and that as your 
life changed by becoming a mother, you saw how art could help you and other people and you wrote a book. Can you, can you yes. share a little bit about that? Yeah, this is my book, The Authentic Mother. Um, and this was not, this did not begin as a book. It began as a journal of how hard motherhood was at the beginning. Um, my, the child that was born that kind of helped me birth this book is now nine. So I've got, you know, almost a decade of space since I wrote it, but, um, it just, I came back to creativity when motherhood was hard and when it wasn't what people said it would be and I didn't feel supported and I didn't feel comfortable in my body, I started making art about it. And then as I started making art about it and writing about it, I realized, oh, this is the book that I needed and maybe other people need this too. So I created a bunch of creative directives that help mothers from, and it could also help fathers, grandparents, medical providers, anyone who knows of a new family or a new baby that came into the world that's kind of wreaking havoc in someone's life. And I had 35 real women who don't always identify as artists create art uh, for the book. They chose some of the directives. Um, let's see if I can find an example. So here's a, this is, um, one of the mothers created this image. The directive was about um, creating an image that represents a feeling that you've been experiencing. And this was about the pain that she felt during and after childbirth. Um, and you can see how expressive it is, right? It really shows the layers and the texture of what she's feeling. Um, and as well as art in this book, I'm a bit of a neuroscience geek as well. And so I talk about what happens in the brain in pregnancy and childbirth, what happens in the daddy brain, how our hormones and our neuropsychology really adapt and shift uh, when we become parents. And I also talk about my story. I talk about my birth plan and how it didn't happen and trauma and what happens when we experience trauma while we're also supposed to be taking care of a fragile infant. So it's a really expansive book. It, it covers all fronts of parenthood and um, creativity. And I'm glad now it's out in the world because I wish it was when I needed it. Yes. Sometimes what what we end up creating is what we wish we would have had. And yes, it sounds like a, a great gift to so many people now. And it is a big transition mm -hmm. to be a parent and it changes your world forever. And a lot of people don't acknowledge that in our culture, strangely. <laughs> it's like, right. let's just have a baby and get back to the way things were, but they can never go back to the way they were. Yeah, so the transformation is is real and powerful and it's great to have tools to process it so thank you for creating that um and you have a, another book coming up right yes i i'm in the process of submitting it to publishers now it's called the radiant life project um it's a master class download of my 15 plus years of clinical experience mixed with my personal healing journey and mm different case studies and the combination of creativity and authenticity, integrity, aligned relationships. So it's a, and it's a work along book. It has embodiment directives and experiential stuff throughout the text. So people can kind of work their own healing as they're reading it. And I'm so excited about this book. It just feels, it, it feels like it came through me, honestly. Mm. And I'm just really, really proud of it. Yay. It's another another thing to birth into the world. It's very, yeah. very powerful. Can you give us um, a, an invitation for a practice that we could try on our own? Mm -hmm. that's getting inspired by you today. What yeah, I'm going to offer an, a creative directive that would be accessible whether you have art experience or not. This is something I've done with my father-in-law who's an auto mechanic. So like anyone can do this. That's it's awesome. called the scribble drawing. Um, and all it requires is a piece of paper, a large piece if you have one, otherwise any size, and a couple of different colored markers, crayons, pencils, paint, whatever you want to use is fine. Um, so the first step is to hold one or two colors, one in each hand, or you can just do one if you want, and close your eyes and, and just scribble on the, on the page. 
and give yourself like 30 seconds of scribbling and have fun with it or get out energy, whatever you need to do. And then after about 30 seconds of scribbling, put the piece of paper down on the ground and walk around it and consider like you're looking up at the clouds looking for shapes in the clouds, but you're looking down at your scribble looking for shapes. And it's really projective. Things will pop out at you. They might be strange things. I've seen a duck. I've seen um, an infant, like a fetus. There's all kinds of things. And just consider it like cloud watching and don't judge what comes up. And then whatever you see, you may see different things from each orientation. Pick your favorite. And then you can amplify it, bring it to life with your materials and add color. You can add a background, you can add writing, but just take what was once a one dimensional scribble and bring out whatever has come. And then based on whatever comes through, you can, you can write about it. You can even dialogue with it, which is you would write a question to the piece and mm-hmm. then you would respond as the piece and you can have a whole conversation just like that. And this way you are planted right in the middle of your unconscious mind, learning more about yourself. So cool. I want to try that. How about all of us that are here watching this? We can post our scribble drawings with this interview. See I would what love come to up see with. it. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah. They're really cool. Wait till you see what comes through. you. Yes. It's powerful. Yes, I've done similar things, um, not with scribbling, but with, uh, yeah, I don't need to get into it, but creating abstract and then looking for meaningful images to pop forward. Very cool. Where can people find you? What can, what can they go find? So my website is a good place to keep up to speed with my retreats and my workshops and my creative offerings. I have a newsletter there as well that'll kind of keep you up to speed. So my website is theradiantlifeproject.com. Um, I'm also active on social media at The Radiant Life Project on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, you know, all the things. Pretty much if you look up the Radiant Life Project, you will come to me. And I've got a lot of really cool, exciting things coming up in the forms of, you know, different retreats and workshops and offerings. And um, I would love for, I would love for your audience to be a part of it. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing all of your good energy and encouragement with us today to use creativity for our own healing. It is very powerful. So thanks for being with us. And we'll look forward to how we can express ourselves more creatively. Mm -hmm. Post your, post your pictures, everybody. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Take care, Kate. Thanks so much. Bye.